And we are moving on to World 2, Stage 1. Now here's where things start to step up a little bit in difficulty, although it's still not really there yet. Right off the bat, there's going to be an enemy in front of you, which you kind of have to sidestep, sort of. You can do that just by doing a single jump and moving to the side and then shooting at it. And this is going to be the first level that's really going to force us to uh, jump off of and away from the island, as you're about to see as we go for the next jet pod. It is possible to like land just to the side of those things and then shoot them, although it's kind of difficult to do. Well, without taking damage at least. And as we move up here, we're going to see a couple Easter Island statues. Not sure, uh, sure why those are in the desert section. And by the way, that health pickup that I just got, like the enemies, after a certain while, it will reappear. So if you take too much damage, you can come back here and then refill your health. And this gives you kind of idea how far horizontally our jumping capabilities can take us as we land on the pillar and go into the next bonus stage. Now for this one, look at the radar. There's four right dots behind us, and it is very easy to screw up this bonus stage by not going for those three balloons that are behind you right at the start. Otherwise, this is fairly rudimentary. Uh, you can jump and then shoot these. You can try jumping on them, although that's actually slower than just shooting them. And I'm hoping that I can get some kind of power-ups out of this one. There's one in particular that I'm looking for, but... I got it in the first couple playthroughs, but uh, I had to re-record this section because it kept getting horrible desync. This is still kind of desync, but it's better than uh, the other few runs that I did. Alright. Now that we're on the ground, might as well take a look around at some other things that are around here. I still have no idea what this thing is. But it shoots at you, and that's never a good thing. And as we take a look on top of this little sphinx here, we're going to try going for the next jet pod, which we can do by hitting this floating platform, and then making our way back up to the Easter Island statues. Basically, the Easter Island statues act as like indicators for which side of the island to go to for each jet pod because you can jump on top of them and then stretch out your jump all the way to the top of this pillar and then you can jump straight to this island. And those things are going to shoot horizontal uh, things at you, but if you just keep moving, they're not going to hit you. Now we're basically going to do the same thing with the other Easter Island statue, which I was going to do before, but the bonus stage was right there and I wasn't going to pass it up. Right over here. Whoop. I thought I'd never had that happen before. And we're going to do the same thing as before here. Just jump straight to the island, continue moving so that none of the seeds hit us. Same applies here. And now we're going to make our way uh, toward the exit. Though I do kind of want to walk around this level a little bit and show you one thing in particular. You thought the Easter Island statues didn't sync up with this? How about pelicans? Pelicans in the desert. Oh god, something's shooting me. But, yeah, there you go. Oh, awesome time extension. That'll give me actually uh, a bit of a bonus for extra time when I think about it. And, yeah, floating stone hinge. They aren't very consistent with their environments in this game, right. which, actually, if I remember correctly, uh, there were a couple of sequels or spin-offs to this game, but none of them were particularly successful. This game kind of got overshadowed by uh, other games uh, shortly after it came out, and uh, the audience for it kind of dried up. But this game, if I remember correctly, is available on PlayStation Network. Ready to go? Now here is where the gameplay changes radically, because they say, okay, you think you can just jump over all our obstacles? Well now we're going to basically put you in a freaking tunnel, 
and turn this into like Wolfenstein. By the way, keep shooting this wall. It'll open up. And you'll get something that's yeah. kind of not worth it. You'll find uh, hit point recharges in several locations of this, so it's not really much of a secret. Although it does give you a bonus at the end for discovering it. Now the thing about this is, uh, like I did at the beginning of the previous level, you're going to want to... Shut up, robot. It didn't hurt that much. You're going to want to keep jumping from side to side basically to strafe out of the way of the bullets. And for this section, you can't double jump your way back up to the top. So if you forget that one jet pod, you'll basically have to restart the level. Although I'm not sure how you could have missed it because there was an indicator for it right there. Now, this is very rudimentary stuff. You're basically using the sand uh, in whatever direction it flows to determine what path you're going to take to find the next jet pod. And the thing about this is, a lot of the enemies you can just run around. And if you look at the timer, if you take your time and shoot all of these enemies down, you are going to run out of time and have to redo this level again. Although, if you do run low on time, it is possible to just basically blitzkrieg this level uh, by just running through, not shooting anything, going around all the enemies and grabbing all the jet pots. And yeah, this is what happens if you try to go against the grain for any of these paths. Even if you double jump, you can't really make your way past it, so it's best to just uh, follow the flow of the sand. As you can see, I'm only stopping to shoot, like, every other enemy in this, and I'm down to, like, 2 minutes 45 seconds. So you do want to keep moving for sections like this. And now we'll just run around the spider and go straight to the exit. Yeah, see how massive the extra bonus is? Even though the secret itself wasn't that great because it was just an HP recharge, it does pay off for the bonus to your score. Which, if it gets high enough, you will get another extra life. Alright, and now for the boss. This is a major step up from the dragon in the first world. As you're gonna see, it's the scorpion looking thing. Which you can only hit by hitting basically the upper torso. Now it's going to launch these electricity balls at us, which do have uh, heat-seeking properties to them, and they will also bounce around the room at several times, and it will launch its claws at you. But there is a relatively easy but painful way to take care of this boss. You're basically going to just bounce on its head and continually assault it with whatever weapons you have at your disposal. When you do this, the electricity balls won't be able to home in on you, and the only way it's going to really hit you is if it hits you with its claws. And usually what happens is this, it'll work itself into a corner and make it much easier to hit. So, a step up from the last boss, but still nothing too difficult. All right. And by the way, so long as you're in the air, the stage doesn't end. It, it only ends when you touch the ground. Well. That takes care of the second world, and now we're going to move on with yet another cutscene similar to the last one. And next time on Jumping Flash, we will be venturing into World 3, the Carnival Section.